Hello everyone. Welcome to my YouTube channel Educator's Pride. Myself Dr. Savita Khatri. In my videos I will discuss about all the life sciences topics. In this video I will discuss about the membrane potential. So let's start with it. Firstly, let's discuss about some basics of membrane potential. Ion transport may be electroneutral that is electrically silent either by symport of the oppositely charged ions or antiport of similarly charged ions or ion transport may be electrogenic that is result in charge separation across the membrane. It can be affected by the membrane potential. For example, the sodium potassium pump imports two potassium ions and simultaneously exports three sodium ions that is it moves one positive charge out of the cell. Active transport of ions by ATP driven ion pump generate and maintain ionic gradients. Ion concentration gradients and selective movement of ions create a difference in electric potential or voltage across the plasma membrane. This is called membrane potential. Typical membrane potentials are between minus 30 and minus 70 millivolt. Minus sign indicates that inside of cells always negative with respect to the outside. In nerve and muscle cell membrane potential in resting state is called as resting potential. For many cells, the principal diffusing ions are sodium, potassium and chloride. In all animal cells, the electric potential across the plasma membrane is generated by movement of cytosolic potassium ions through resting potassium ion channel to the external medium. In plants and fungi, the membrane potential is maintained by the ATP driven pumping of protons from the cytosol across the membrane. Now, the structure of neurons. Before understanding membrane potential, I will give a brief intro on structure of nerve cells. Nerve cells are specialized cells that have the ability to respond to a stimulus and convert it into an action potential. Nerve cells have three parts. First, a cell body. Second, dendrites and third is an exon. The cell body contains a nucleus surrounded by cytoplasm that includes typical cellular organelles such as lysosomes, mitochondria, a Golgi complex. Most neurons have two kinds of processes. First, multiple dendrites and a single exon. A single exon of a neuron propagates nerve impulses towards another neuron that is a muscle fiber or a gland cell. An exon is a long, thin, cylindrical projection that often joins the cell body to a cone-shaped elevation called the exon hillock. An exon contains mitochondria, microtubules, and neurofibrils. Because rough endoplasmic reticulum is not present, so protein synthesis does not occur in the exon. The exon and its collaterals ends by dividing into many processes called as exon terminals. Now, the process of transmission of nerve impulse. A nerve impulse is an electrical signal produced by the flow of ions across the plasma membrane of a neuron. Propagation of nerve impulse in nerve cells, that is exon, changes the permeability of the membrane. This change in permeability causes change in the potential across the exon membrane. This change in resting potential is called action potential. An action potential is generated when the membrane is depolarized. In the resting state, the membrane potential is minus 60 millivolt. In depolarized state, the membrane potential becomes positive and attains a value of about plus 30 millivolt. Voltage gated channels are responsible for the generation of action potential. Two kinds of voltage gated channels are responsible for the generation of action potential. One selectively permeable to sodium ions and other two potassium ions is responsible for transient changes in the permeability. Opening of voltage gated sodium channels increase the permeability of membrane to sodium ions. The increase in sodium ions conductance increase the number of positive ions inside the exon. Similarly, voltage gated potassium channels increase the potassium ion conductance outside the exon. Depolarization at one point along an exon opens sodium ion channels locally. Sodium ions begin to flow into the cell along the electrochemical gradient across the plasma membrane. This leads to 
very rapid change in membrane potential from about minus 60 to plus 30 millivolt in a millisecond. As the action potential spreads, the membrane potential repolarizes due to potassium ion channel opening and sodium ion channel inactivation. Due to opening of potassium ion channel, potassium ions flow outward and so the membrane potential returns to a negative value. After it, I can summarize the process by comparing resting potential and action potential which are given in the table of different state of exon. In the resting state of exon, the potential is called as resting potential and the membrane is polarized which is mainly due to the movement of potassium ion through potassium ion leaky channels. Internal potential in this state is negative and external potential is positive. Next, in the active state of exon, the membrane is said to be polarized with action potential due to increased permeability to sodium ions through voltage gated sodium channels. Internal potential in this state is positive and external potential is negative. In the recovery state of exon, all the points are same as in the resting state, but repolarization is due to increased permeability to potassium ions through voltage gated potassium channels. Next is chemical synapses. How is information transferred from one neuron to the next? Neurons communicate at their meeting points called as synapses and the small gaps separating the neurons are referred to as synaptic cleft. Signals are transferred in only one direction across the synapse. Synapses can be either chemical or electrical. First is an electrical synapse is what is often called as a gap junction in which the membranes of two neurons are continuous at tiny spots. No chemical intermediary is involved in an electrical synapse. Second, the key feature of all chemical synapses is the presence of small membrane bound organelles called as synaptic vesicles within the presynaptic terminal. These vesicles are filled with neurotransmitters, for example, acetylcholine. Next is transmission at chemical synapses. Synaptic cleft separates the membrane of the presynaptic and postsynaptic cells. Arrival of action potential at a synapse causes release of neurotransmitters by the presynaptic cells. Their diffusion across the synaptic cleft and their binding by specific receptors on the plasma membrane of the postsynaptic cell. These signals depolarize the postsynaptic membrane and tending to induce an action potential in it. A chemical synapse may be excitatory or inhibitory. Action of neurotransmitter may be promote or inhibit the generation of an action potential in the postsynaptic cell. So this is all about the concept of membrane potential. If you like the video then subscribe my channel and hit the bell icon for more related videos. Thank you.